Welcome back, everyone, to our Fake Nerds Watch for Lovecraft Country. We are doing two episodes this week because, as you know, we have been off for two weeks due to various illnesses and emergencies. Due to life. Due to life. So we are talking about the sixth episode, Meet Me in Daigu, mm -hmm. and the seventh episode, I Am. Yes. We're going to be talking about five minutes of each episode, one part at a time. We're going to be here for the next three hours. Strap in, everyone. We're going to die. That's the dream. That's the dream. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's just get right into it with episode six. Who are you? I'm B Brandon McClure. Shoot. Oh. We've done this twice already tonight. I'm Brandon T. McClure. With me, as always, is Sparks Witty. Hi, hi. Ryan Neliopoulos. It's me. I'm the man with the plan. All right, so now let's get into it with episode six. Okay. Finally. Let's, let's go to Daigu. We finally meet Jamie Chung in earnest. Boy. We start in the fall of 1949. She loves movies, doesn't she? She loves Judy Garland movies. Hell yeah, she mm -hmm. does. Um, I really like the whole sequence in the opening of her imagining singing and dancing around in the theater. Yeah. Um, she's watching a movie mm -hmm. and there's only two other people in there and they're just like making out. Uh, and they're like, oh, we should get out of here. Yeah, so yeah. she gets the whole theater to herself and basically re like reenacts her own musical in her head, which yep. is really mm -hmm. cute. Uh, as far as we know, this is just a regular old girl that's living in Korea. Nothing strange yet. Yeah. Yep. She's uh, Her mom really wants her to bring a date home. Uh, she says She says she men. She wants her to bring she men home. She says plural men, which yeah. was my first thing of, that's weird. <laughs> and so we see her at speed dating. Which, and that doesn't go so good. Uh I, I knew that was a real thing, but like uh, upon like doing some like research in this episode, that was a very popular thing in the fifties. Because like getting married and like getting the family is just like what every person should do. And I'm like, oh wow, a minute with a person to decide if you're gonna live. With you. That was crazy. It was kind of sad, like watching, watching all of the like even the ones who are like laughing, like hmm, X. Even yeah, the the one guy who actually connects with her about like Judy Garland movies, uh, mm -hmm. even he, he passes her up. Um, he just maybe he just saw a twinkle in that eye. He's one to avoid, which I can understand, I guess. Uh, but she does find a man uh, yeah. at a bar. Yeah, at a bar. Mm -hmm. she, oh, it's, it's it's Ando from Heroes. It's Ando from Heroes. Yes, it is. Wow, uh, James Kyson. Wow. Uh, uh, she so she she uh, she brings the, the gentleman home, lights all these candles. All the candles light up right away. You, oh, uh, second. Uh, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we leave the speed dating, I just remembered because I was glancing through my notes. Uh, she has that one moment where she totally bonds with a dude over Judy Garland. Yeah. And he's still like, yeah, but no. Yeah. Yeah. That? yeah. That's that's cold. Yeah, it is. It is cold. Uh, so she brings so she brings a, a hero's yeah. guy over and uh, uh, they make love. Passionate, steamy love. As rated R as. Is as, it passionate? As, for him. And then a tail comes out of her butt. <laughs> yep. Did you know that's what that was? <laughs> Not at first. <laughs> yeah, me either. No. Uh, and then uh, those look more like spider legs to me when they were first appearing. Same. Yeah. Uh, and then and then uh, tails start coming out of her, her nostrils and her, her ears. ears. And suckers come out of her eyeballs, and I'm like, oh my god. And Jim. then out of her mouth. Yep. Yeah. And then. She gets and then and then a rain of blood and she absorbs his whole life before he explodes. Yes, and um, she sees things he's done in the past, but also things he's going to do in the future, mm -hmm. which is wild. And what that means for other characters too is also very wild. Um, but as definitely a confirmed thing of like him on top of the mountain, like I'm gonna climb Mount Everest or something. That was his future, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is even just sad because that seemed like a totally probably regular guy. <laughs> he probably didn't deserve to get murdered like that. Uh, yeah, that was uh, incredibly horrifying for me to watch. I yeah yeah I believe it. Oh my god! Um, um, you, you just I mean it's just not something you expect. I mean she, she she has a conversation with her mom and like they it's like it's tenuous and like she seems like a little off but like you know it could her just mom be... just comes in and she's like ten more yeah mm -hmm. um, and and starts cleaning up the blood and you're like what yeah, yeah what are you into yeah um. She, it, it, the cats agree. It's it's crazy shit. We uh we jump from the fall of 1949 to the summer of 1950 when the U.S. troops start arriving. Oh geez, and there's nothing there's nothing more um like reassuring and heroic than like we're here to save you. This is fine. Throwing papers on the ground. We're don't worry. This is fine. Trucks rolling in. We're fine. Like this it reminded me of um of Mars attacks 
Have you ever seen that? It's like, like we're here yes. in peace as they're destroying everything. Yes. I'm like, that's what Americas do. They roll in and, and under uh, peace. And, and like, specifically yeah. in this moment is when her, her movie theater's closed. Yeah. Because yeah. of all this happening, um, which is all she really cares about uh, because she's not really an entire person no uh at this moment and we don't know that yet but what we'll learn and i think it's relevant just for like talking about in review yeah. is that gia is uh a spirit she's a she's a she's nine Naruto. she's a nine tail fox spirit yeah that was summoned into Nara. Nara. no from Nara. Nara. no no Nara. 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 yeah uh Nara? uh gara is the one tail raccoon gotcha um, yeah. Uh, so she is the nine tail fox spirit that has been summoned um, because she we learn right about now. Yeah. Um, she needs to absorb a hundred souls in order to restore uh, the woman's daughter to her body. Yes. Uh, because she was summoned uh, by a mudang on her mother's orders. Like a shaman. After uh, she uh, found out that her husband was. Molesting. Yeah, her. so uh uh Gia's stepfather uh was was yeah, molesting her as a child. Uh and the mom wanted to do something about it. So she summoned well, if I rem if I remember correctly, Gia died. Yeah. And uh, this and this this nine tailed fox was summoned to be her to take revenge. But I if I recall, it's the mother who thinks that Gia will be restored, but that's actually not the case because it's just the night it's just gonna be the nine tailed fox forever. I think so. I think so. But like I the, don't know. The, like, the, mom, like, the mom wants to believe that if she does all this, GL will be restored, but that's not yeah. actually the case. Yeah, I don't think it's... I think, like, on design, it's it's ambiguous. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not it, made clear. It sounds like the Mudang told her that's what would happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not clear. And we don't get an answer in this. Yeah, um, but it is clear that, like, uh, it, it is not... It is not... Um, a monster that is just living inside Jamie Chung, they have become like one entity. So like she's yeah, sure. feeling the thing, she's starting to feel things that Gia would feel. Well, she, uh, she, uh, explicitly, she explicitly said, I'm not Gia. I have yeah. these memories. Do you know why? Because I killed your husband. Yeah. Right. I have uh, his memories. The reason I have these memories is because they're your hu your husband's memories, not mine. Yeah, I don't have yeah. Gia's memories. Yeah, um, that's a really aggressive and powerful scene. Yeah, that was yeah. really intense. Um, There's a... Uh, yeah, they, they talk about how he loved her wrong. Uh, they call the nine tail fox spirit the Kumiho yeah. spirit. Mm -hmm. um, she has none of her daughter's memories uh, and torments her because she's angry with her with memories that are, she's stealing from the husband. Yeah. Um, prior, she, prior to that scene, there was a moment where Young Jaw is uh, trying to advise her about her mom, but they're in the midst of seeing uh, them hunt down a bunch of communists. Yes, so a she, mob is hunting down she, communists. Yeah, she works. Uh, uh, is it she a nurse? Young Ja and Gia are yeah, nurses, um, yeah. Um, she has a cool friend um, who, who unfortunately is not on the up and up and hangs out with a bunch of communists, which, you mm -hmm. know, at the time, uh, you know, McCarthyism. Um, I, I uh, watching a video about this episode, um, the Korean War is often called the Forgotten War because we don't actually learn a lot about it. I, for sure, I don't know jack shit about it. Yeah. But uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have known about it personally, but my dad served in the Korean War. There you go. Um, but yeah, after World War II, uh, Japan occupied Korea, and like we were like, no, no communists in my place. So like we went to go help them take out the Japanese regime and like stop communism. But at the same time, as Americans do when they go to another country, we just we're awful and we rape and pillage and we're just bad. Um, well, Atticus, Atticus kills her friend. Man, Atticus, I gotta tell you, like the, these these two episodes we're talking about, like it really it really shows Atticus' dark side, like his, like. That we haven't seen yet, and it, like it complicates that character in such a way. I mean, like I won't even say. I, I I mean, like yes, it's a it's a dark side. I wouldn't even say like necessarily it's his dark side, but it's the it is the the things that happen in war. Yeah. Uh, which you know I don't I don't know that that's necessarily how cavalierly we should shove that off, but that, no. that is what it is. Is yes. it's just like every soldier ultimately gets put into these situations where they just got to shoot people just like willy nilly. Like it's not big. Deal. Um, there's particularly the moment I want to touch on is that young job when she's advising her, there's a, a mob of Koreans who are chasing down the communists. They hang one in front of them, which is a really powerful. And the scene. Americans didn't do anything uh, about This is it. the same moment when GR reveals that she knows young Jaw's communist and doesn't mind. Yeah. Um, when uh, they when they get brought down, uh, this is the Atticus moment when they get brought down on their knees in front of them. Uh, young Ja will give herself up to save Gia from being shot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they already shoot one in front of them, and then he's holding the gun on Young Ja. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that was a that was an intense uh, whole thing to see. And Gia's motivations for wanting to take out Atticus after that because he shows up in the hospital hurt. injured. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so she she wants to kill him. She wants to hurt him. And we watch. She has uh, one more. She has one more soul that she needs to take, and she yeah, chooses she, to be Atticus. When she was talking to her friend at that that like rally, <clears throat> like uh, she killed another American who was just standing by watching it happen. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So and, she's just one away. And she said that she, she didn't want to kill the one. This is when she got after the mother. She's like, I'm I decided I'm not going to do it because I want to be me. Yes. Um uh because I, I you say I'm a monster, but I want to be myself because yeah. I have these feelings or uh yeah. Um we see this moment when she's watching uh, Atticus where he gets really frustrated with his glasses and he throws them and he starts crying. Um, Cause he can't read his, his book. And uh, I thought that was a very like strong, they, they kind of mentioned it on the podcast too, that it's a very strong moment of just like showing that Atticus is still childish mm-hmm. uh, in a sense. There's an innocence of where he's put into uh, that. He is unprepared for the world he's in Yeah, uh, with that moment. And I thought that was pretty good. Um, and it's good to you know show him throw a tantrum, show him kind of being that babyish about it because that's mm-hmm. that's what happens. Um, <clears throat> I think is that when like when Gia's like, oh, I'm gonna go talk to this guy. Yeah, it, not right then. Uh, in that moment is when ultimately she decides. I think that she's going to take Kill his soul. Him. Yeah, and so she goes out to the back of the building. Yeah. to calm herself down. Um, it's the next day when she goes and helps him with the bed, and they talk about the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And you yeah. learn that uh, Gia doesn't think it's very good because she saw the movie. She doesn't know the she book. Doesn't, she didn't read the book. So uh, he wants her to read it to him because his glasses are broken. That's, that's, that's how they start yeah. to connect. Um, that's an awesome moment because like, she, she's like, she thinks she's on the up and up. Like, Oh, like I know how it ends this and this and this. And then he hands her the book. I'm like, well, that's cool. That's how the movie ends. Yeah, Why yeah. don't you try the book? Yeah. I'm like, and Oh She, she yeah. kind of it brushes it off. But then it's later when she's playing ball mm-hmm. with uh, other nurses that the ball goes over towards them. And uh, she starts up a new conversation with Atticus where she admits that she misses the theater because she wanted to watch all the movies. And she asks if he and the other gentlemen know Judy Garland. Mm -hmm. Uh, At this point, they bring up uh, an interesting thing, which is like from Gia's perspective, you could totally understand it. Um, But I learned because of the podcast that um, Koreans were super racist towards black people, too, Mm -hmm. at this time. So uh, there would not be the same vibe of Atticus not experiencing this while he was in Korea. Um, but for the show, they're doing what they're doing. But mm-hmm. what it is, is uh, uh, that they say, you know, well, back home, like we wouldn't, we would be servants. We wouldn't be considered the same way, all that kind of stuff. Um, and Gia could not understand that because she's the Kumiho, but they're also putting in perspective, of, like they're not treated that way here in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really what makes them connect with each other. So Atticus knowing that she wanted to see the new Judy Garland movie and wasn't able to, he calls her back to the military camp Oh, uh, so where he sets up the uh, movie to show her. Yeah. He um, has like the projector and, and he says, uh, yeah, my uncle George sent it. Oh, they have a little dinner. Um, mm, it was cute. Yeah. A couple, couple killers. So she takes him to the banging killing room. That's how <laughs> yeah. I wrote it in my notes. It, that's what it is. The, the room right. for banging and killing. And uh, Atticus, Atticus uh, has a really tender moment where he admits that he's a virgin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, she, he says a line that uh, he says she makes him believe in the good in him. Yeah. And I feel like he said that to Letty too. Yeah. Oh, at yeah, some yeah, point yeah. in the show. 100%. And I'm like, uh, ooh, Atticus. I it don't know. Like when she's in the bathtub. That's a little uncomfortable. Like when she's in the bathtub or something and he's like, he like kisses her hand or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's not the first time he said that line. <laughs> yeah. And that, that put me in a little like a, ooh. So, like, uh, there's this whole concept. Like, I really like Atticus and Letty together. But uh, looking back on this episode and, and where we've gone so far, I'm like, Atticus still clearly has complicated feelings for Gia. Because he called her the first moment he arrived in Chicago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm like, you don't do that after what happened unless you, you're still invested in that person. One of the things I really liked about this episode is, the, is the, again, we talk about a lot in the show, the perspective shift. Um, what I found really interesting was that this almost was a different show. This is a character we have only ever seen in passing. Mm-hmm. And now she's just the main character for we this hour. We haven't even seen her in passing. We, we've heard of her. We saw her, saw her for a dream yeah. Yeah. and heard her voice twice. Yeah. Well, she shows, she shows up in the mansion. The ho- she the ho- pops ho- out. Right? She was a hallucination. Oh, yes, yes. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. That's- um, so, like, what they just... Dis- 
they decided to do was just like that's a really interesting interpretation of her too now knowing what the yeah. story was and yeah. Atticus Atticus is the like just is the Korean War experience embodied yeah Atticus shows up halfway through the episode mm-hmm. uh, no no familiar character shows up for the first 30 minutes of this episode. And I thought that was very fascinating and very engaging. Well, I think it would be interesting if all of our main characters showed up in Korea during the Korean war. No, what but we sense. knew what knowing, knowing that this episode would go to Korea and knowing that Atticus was there, I assumed Atticus was the point of view character. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I but know. it wasn't, it was Gia. Gia is the yeah. point of view character for this episode. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Which you know, I thought that was interesting. Character. No, it was the right way to do it. We tend to point of view a, a particular person each episode of Lovecraft. Every, Country, every but this episode. one, this one was more zeroed in than usual. Right. This one, this was the one that like it, we talk about every week that the uh, that each episode cha- shifts this, shifts the point of view. But like for whatever reason, this one was so to me felt more unique than that. Yeah. That, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. She uh she is having feelings for him, so she sends him away. Well, after are, he admits to being a virgin. Oh, is this is this? Don't they start banging? No, not yet. No. Oh, okay. Um, they they were close, but she would. This was when she was still planning to kill him, and she sends him away, and he doesn't understand why. Yes. Yeah, and right. this is when uh the the mother Uma uh, uh gets mad at her. That's right. Uh, and calls her a monster. And uh, this is the next day she confronts him at the military yard and says, "You killed my best friend." Yeah. Um, and uh, they they have a really great com like a whole scene where they're they're sharing the pain of what they're both have gone through yeah. and that they both done terrible things um but that there's something between them that they feel is that is that mm-hmm. the is that the part where where she's like like all everyone sees us as monsters but like we can't let them decide who we are or we something? we are not monsters yeah, yeah. Uh, that um, was that was probably like that was one of the most powerful things in, in this whole season they're like, both crying because they're both anguished by Atticus by what he's done her by knowing what he's done but also what she's done yeah. and they touch heads to each other as they're crying that was so and she says we are not monsters that was so beautiful because yeah. it's like this she she literally is a monster and this is like the first time that like something's broken through through her like evil exterior or whatever yeah uh, and I think that's just that's really pretty it's not even evil it's not just, evil, uh, just what she is this it, like she has a, a a thing that she does and then she's also learning about like and she She's been told by her, by the mother, like, you're not really a th- that thing. Like, yeah. you, you can't really experience these things. You can't experience love, all these things. And she's like, no, I can. I am an identity unto myself. I love it. Um, uh, Uma uh, is upset. Her mother is upset that she won't take the last spirit. And Gia calls her out for never, ever loving her. And she's like, no, I am capable of this. I can have this. Uh, we progress forward into the late winter. Mm-hmm. Um uh, Gia is teaching Atticus about the nine tail fox spirit called the Kumio. Mm-hmm. Um, and after they've talked about it for a while, they start banging for the first time. Yeah. Um, so they spend some months together without but she, that. she, she does. She's well, on no, top of him. No, they did. They, they started having sex before that. This was just this time because they go uh, right after that touching scene in the rain, they go back into the screening room where he showed her the Judy Garland movie. And that's the first time they have sex together, Mm. which is when we learn that it doesn't have to happen every time she has sex. She can control it. But I I think it was, has something to do with the position because isn't she on top of him? Yeah. I think it has to do like, yeah, with the positioning. It's not, we don't know. We have no idea. Um, by but, the way, she has some control over it. But this, but this later time in the winter of 1950, the tales come out, and on Atticus's, uh, on on Atticus mid coitus, and she sees his life, both past and future. Uh, so she sees him killing, uh, hurting Young Jaw, uh, doing some uh, serious torture. Yeah, <laughs> like, and uh, like with like and a also and... and also sees him dying in the future, yeah. uh, in some type of sci-fi contraption. Almost like not entirely dissimilar to like stuff from the previous episode, um, mm. but like that's a bummer. <laughs> oh no! So uh, she she throws his body aside with the tails, and Atticus is freaking out. As. But Giaz is just only focused on trying to tell him not to go home. Yeah, because yeah. he'll die. Uh, but Atticus can't Cause deal. Because she uh, she saw him go home because yeah. of her, because of uh, Montrose disappearing. Yes. The mom was just like listening in and she's like, like the door's open and she's just like right there. I'm like, oh, that's gross. <laughs> um, Atticus, uh, prior to that that whole sex scene says like, there's nothing you could tell me about you that would change how I feel. 
Um, uh, and technically, he's right because she didn't tell him; she did it to him. Uh, and I think her. I think that would change anybody's uh, feelings in the moment. No, it's true. Um, but again, like I, I think it's very interesting to look back, knowing this was the inter- interaction, and look at all of uh, Atticus's attitudes towards her after that, where mm-hmm. he dreams about her as the beautiful Martian in his that comes down. That to starts him. to make more sense. Uh, he yeah. calls her later that day he uh envisions her as uh almost like a punishment continuing upon him uh from the korean war both probably over his bitter uh romantic feelings but also his feelings about being in that wartime Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot still there between them um that's got to come back around somehow yeah Yeah. and and i was i'm so fascinated Mm because like every episode Mm -hmm. we get a different type of like like monster or like folklore thing, you know, we, we've had ghosts and we've had Lovecraft creatures and now we have, uh, we got this. The Nine Tail like, Fox. Yeah. Movie. We got like, like Japanese mythology folklore. I'm like, man, just anything, just anything is, is allowed. <laughs> like, that's so cool. Like, it's not like, Oh, we're, not, we're doing just sci-fi. We're doing just this. Like, no, we can have ghosts and Frankenstein and like, uh, Naruto. Um, it is, it, I believe it is Korean based. Korean based? Okay, sorry. Yeah, Korean. I, I know right. Naruto uses it, but it no, would yeah, be the yeah. first time that like they, they use things from other. Yeah, yeah. I, I do believe it is Korean based because the whole thing is that like the Koreans kind of hate the Japanese at this time. Yes. So it'd be a weird thing to. No, that makes sense. Um, yeah. sure. So at the, we'll end, on that, pretty sure. at the end of the episode, she goes to the moon to summon her. And uh, the moon. Yeah. And she wants to, she wants to, she wants to know if Atticus can be saved. Yep, yeah. and the the mom goes with her now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Bad news though. Uh, uh, as this is a whole scene is uh, playing out in its ending, we're getting an overlay of Judy Garland when she is talking about uh, when people were calling her a member of the Communist Party, mm-hmm. um, really publicly, which I thought was a really excellent parallel. Yeah. Uh, to the story, I thought that was awesome. She um, some- which is not of that time period. It's not of 1950. Of that moment, it happened much later. Uh, in, into the 60s, but I think that's very, very powerful. Yeah, relevant. Yeah, uh, to tie those things together. Um, Jia uh, is foretold by the Mudang that she will see countless more deaths before her journey ends. Yeah, so I think we're seeing her again. Uh, I absolutely believe where you're seeing her. She's again. going to America, baby. How she gets there, um, we'll find out. It's a plane. Yeah, a plane. we're gonna see. Took a boat. Um, true, I thought this whole episode was fantastic. Me yeah. Too. Every, I mean, every episode has been, but I thought Jamie Chung killed it. Yeah, the the playing mm-hmm. someone who's like who's like uh, like lost their humanity, but like is still trying to like capture it, trying to like relive it. Um, it's really trying good. to learn it, trying to learn it. Yeah, um, yeah. She's it's a so funny because like I haven't seen much Jamie Chung stuff since like Dragon Ball Evolution, right? So I'm just like, oh yeah, man, actors they really got well, it. Yeah. It was interesting. I went through a Jamie Chung kind of like uh, like tumble. Um, yeah. So obviously, you know, she was in, uh, she was in the gifted, yeah. Um, and but I remembered she was in Once Upon a Time as Mulan. Oh, okay, cool. And I was like, man, actually, yeah, I remember that being. Oh wait, that was super disappointing because they set up a relationship between her and Aurora, <laughs> and they never went through with it, and I've never forgiven them. Man, if I if I but ever- it was still good material. It was. They didn't change the fact that like the relationship didn't happen, but they didn't change the fact that Mulan was in love with her. Mm-hmm. If but I they, heard, tried, they tried to be like, hey, we're sorry. Here's Ruby and Dorothy. There you go. Uh, if I heard better things about that show, I'd probably watch it because it has it's it's all the Disney. It's stuff. a lot. It's a lot like Heroes, where if you watch like the first season, that's well worth it. Like just the first season, honestly. Okay. Like you, you, you'll be left on the the hang, but like the first season is worthwhile shit to watch. Because I want like I, I it's. I want to watch a you show. You could go past it. You could go to seasons two and three, which I don't think are terrible. Yeah. They're not as good as the first season, but they're they're all right. But then I would quit. Okay. <laughs> uh, once, I, I go to season four where they mix in Wizard of Oz and then Frozen. Ooh. Hey, what you know that? what? Actually, I look, that literally... Frozen story is really good. It's just that the writing of the show as a whole got bad. I wasn't going to I wasn't going to address that at all. Um, once Upon a Time in Wonderland is pretty good. Once Upon a Time in Wonderland is really good. You can't watch it anywhere. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Trying, yeah, baby. That that one that one season of Once Upon a Time in Wonderland is really solid, and you can't get it anywhere. That was mm-hmm. uh that, that had a lot of Sebastian Stan because Sebastian Stan was the Mad Hatter. Oh, interesting. Oh no, not the Mad Hatter. I'm so sorry. Who was no, he? The... Mad Hatter. That was him. Yeah, yeah. Sebastian Stan was the Mad Hatter. 
All right. John Lithgow was the rabbit. Wow, what a different time. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's that on uh, Meet Me and Daigu. Um, I thought that whole episode was incredible. I thought they did a great job yeah. uh, capturing the, the time period, the setting, uh, the emotions of war uh, that were going on. The emotions of monsters, human and actual. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, then we move into episode seven. I am. Yeah. I am. Um, this is the Hipp so, Hippolyta uh, episode, Hippolyta is, episode is, we've been going for. It is Sammy, not Stevie, yes. who is with Montrose. We got, I got it wrong. It's, we were saying Stevie last time we did an episode. Oh. Uh, Sammy is the name of Montrose's partner. There you go. Um, yes, I, I, was, I was close. I got close. Uh, real quickly, I just want to say, when uh, she said, when, when Christina says the, by the way, hold on. Sorry. When Christina says, uh, that the orrery holds the key to the time machine. I did not expect the literal key to be inside the orrery. Yeah, it was an actual key. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was actually just holding the key. Sometimes I actually like it when they're like, "Yeah, that's going to be the key to the thing," and it's like, "No, it really is a key." Yeah, what are we expecting? We're not we're not just being like, uh, "It's a it's tesseract." Like a key. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the beginning of this episode wipes away our prevailing theory of Christine and William. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yep. And William is in fact dead. And I now think that that was not written as well yeah. in previous episodes. Uh, I think I think to hide it, yeah. it was it was written to treat them like they were different characters. And I'm like, I do not. I'll have to go back, I guess. But I do not feel like I feel like there are plenty of moments with William that don't feel like they're written the same way Christina is. Yeah. And I think it is to throw you off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I think I agree. Yeah. Uh, and that's a bummer um, because if they did feel like they were speaking the same, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But I do feel like William was an identity unto himself, and I'm especially going to be bummed if from here on William starts talking more like Christina rather than William has up to this point, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because that tone shift is like, well, you, you're doing that because now we know, yeah, uh, rather than that being natural to who the character was, yeah. So that bums me out. I'm not going to lie. Um, mostly just because I, I don't think that was written appropriately up mm -hmm. to this point. Sure. Because th isn't it like, she just says like, I, I saved him or something. But yeah, like, William, he's, but he's William was in fact her teacher. He broadened her mind. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he did get she, shot. She says, I am the voice behind William. Okay. Um, but I yeah. mean everything I say. So I guess just like now that he's dead, it's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm living his word. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three days ago, Hippo Hippolyta was at the destroyed lodge, <laughs> um, intercut with, uh, her checking out the machine. That's actually what we see before we see Christina yeah. and William. Uh, and it's her looking at the orrery and, um, orrery. And uh, we're seeing her exploring the lodge and knowing George was there because she finds the tattered ruins of uh, Diana's comic. It's crazy that that whole building gets destroyed, but there's that perfectly I cannot, comic book. I cannot believe how long it took for me to realize that Hippolyta and Diana were the Greek names. Yeah. Um, that, that it is, you know, the queen of the Amazons and Diana. And Prince. Diana, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't thinking about Diana in relation to the name. Um, it's nice. Yeah, Princess D. Uh, pretty good. Um, yeah. So Letty, meanwhile, has the same nightmare about the lodge burning. Oh, right. But yeah, with yeah. Uh, uh, she has a pregnant belly. Yeah, she does. And uh, in this one, um, Hannah doesn't try to say anything to her. Mm -hmm. She just uh, she's just watching her. Is it her and Atticus have the same dream? Her and Atticus had that had a dream earlier. Yeah. That was the same one where he was running through and she was saying something that you couldn't hear. Yeah. But she dreams she has a pregnant belly, uh, which is going to and that, her mind. And Come that back. she has a book. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Atticus shows Letty what he's been able to translate and interpret up to this point. And uh, Letty lets him in on the fact that she's had this dream and they realize that they've been sharing the same dream. And they also realize that she was carrying the book of names with her in the dream. Um, elsewhere, Montrose is having a type of domestic bliss uh, oh. on a morning after with Sammy. Yeah. And, uh, and Montrose, uh, the moment that he learns Sammy went somewhere uh, from the place and came back, gets concerned about nosy neighbors Don't worry, and, starts, saw. and starts reacting really aggressively. Um, 
And he starts just like actively just like ruining breakfast just because. Which is a bummer after watching where Montrose finally got to. And yeah. we learned this is like the first time he's ever let Sammy stay the night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still just like so. And Montrose being homophobic of himself. Yes. Uh, uh, lashes out and Sammy says, I'm not putting up for, with this and storms out the door. But uh, Montrose grabs him at the door to stop him. But Atticus and Letty were coming. Yep. And they see them. And Atticus now knows it's true. Uh, the rumors and Atticus uh, confronts him about it and asks him if his mother knew and he reveals that she did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Atticus clearly wants to hit him all over again. Cause the last time he almost beat the man to death. Yeah. Uh, but he storms away. Uh, Atticus calls him a, a naughty word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't like yep. uh, Atticus clearly has some serious homophobic issues that he probably got from his dad. Unfortunately. I, uh, yes. Uh, I think it goes even further beyond that. I do like that. They flesh it out with Atticus in the back, uh, in the back of the building where he's saying, all that time that he beat me and said, I had to be tough and I yeah. couldn't be soft and I had to be hard. And he's been this. Yeah. Um, it's rough. And uh, that, that is like, it, it's a toxic masculinity thing, but it is something that like, I can under, I, I, I do believe that on some level, yes, Atticus is being uh, homophobic, but I don't think it's, it's directly that like it bothers him that his father is, is a homosexual. It bothers him that his father is a homosexual and also beat him his whole yeah. life uh, telling him he had to be like a great man. This mm -hmm. tough man. It's, it's hypocritical. Thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's the hypocrisy of it that, that uh, makes Atticus's blood boil so yeah. much. Um, and I'm glad that they gave him that moment to air that. Um, uh, it's also very interesting to know that Atticus's mother knew. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe she just didn't care. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it does lend a whole lot of like, there was, there was some kind of love between them uh, that we've talked about because Montrose still wears the ring. Yeah. But um, maybe they, they understood more of a concept about what, who he was, uh, who knows. Um, Letty, Meanwhile, had stayed behind while Atticus was was shaking this off and asked Montrose for his source on info about uh, uh, Dora's family. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, have, have Letty and Ruby talked yet? Not yet. Okay. Um, because uh, Ruby's going to end up staying behind and so is Letty while Atticus takes the bus. Mm -hmm. We're getting up to that. Um, so... Ruby is going to be babysitting Diana while Hippolyta heads out on a journey and Atticus and Letty are showing up because they wanted to borrow the car. Mm -hmm. uh, Hippolyta is immediately displeased to see them and like, no, 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 I don't think so. Back the hell off. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. And uh, drives away. Uh, Atticus realizes he's going to have to take the bus to get to where he's going and uh, Letty decides she needs to stay back behind. Uh, because and Letty, because you forget that Letty told Atticus that there were two survivors of the Tulsa massacre in his, in his family, his cousin and his mom. I mean, I didn't forget. I just didn't say the specifics, but yes, you're right. Well, I think that's really cool that they, they, I know they've done it before in the show, but I really like that. Uh, her mom, his mom is a survivor of the, Tulsa, of the Tulsa massacre. I think that's a really cool way to yeah plug it into history. Yeah. Um, that, that is the, the connective source that Atticus is trying to hunt down, uh, mm -hmm. is this cousin. Um, Letty remains behind, goes to Ruby and apologizes for hiding the money from Ruby, which Ruby's got a whole other thing on her mind <laughs> at this point. Uh, uh, it's a pretty nice moment where Letty's admitting to how she's just been very shitty and selfish and all this. And Ruby's like, you know, uh, she says, uh, I, I net all this time disliking mother. I never thought I'd grow up to be her. Yeah. And uh, Ruby says, I never heard her apologize once in her whole damn life. Um, which is the beginning of Letty and Ruby finally being able to connect with each other. But we are led to believe that Ruby knows stuff is up with Letty at this point because Christina dropped off a little clue about uh, your family. And she says, my family. And we cut away. And we don't know what Ruby knows for sure yet, yeah. but we know she knows stuff. Yeah. Um, beans are being spilled. Yeah, magic beans. Yes. Um, meanwhile, Hippolyta uh, has headed for the coordinates that she got from the machine, the Ori, uh, on to, into Kansas. Um, Sweet Kansas. On her drive, she has this immense joy as she's seeing a black woman on a motorcycle uh, go by her, which uh, you and I both did the same thing, which is we saw the motorcycle behind her and went, oh, Jesus. Is it going to be a cop? Yeah. It's going to be that a cop. And I think they all knew that that's how they were framing it. And they're like, they're going to think that. And then it's just this happy black woman on a motorcycle. I'm like, 
that, damn, that's, that's great. Uh, I don't remember her name, but that that is a real historical figure. She's the first black uh, person to drive across the country. That's exceptionally cool. Oh, yeah, cool. I love that it was happening at the same time that happened. That's um, cool. And uh, at the same time, while she's in this moment of joy, she also finds her daughter's comic in her basket. Yeah, uh, which which makes her really happy because that's she thought because she thought it wasn't going to be there. Right. Because uh, Diana's had a uh, some attitude, she didn't want to do the checklist. Uh, she's she's dealing with she's dealing with her dad's death. It's not great. Um, Atticus has gotten to St. Louis by bus, and he learns about his mother's family uh, through info that was shared by his cousin Ethel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, oh, Ethel! He asks if there's really anything left, and uh, the woman he's speaking to says, "White folks uh, burned up everything, um, but." Like and likely the book he's looking for, the book of names as well. Probably, yeah. Uh, but she has a photo album which he'll check out. Letty and Ruby are getting along and uh, talking about men relationships. Uh, William in a vague way, and Atticus in a more direct way, uh, as they are looking after Dee and her friends. Uh, Letty suspects that she may be pregnant because um, of the garlic. Which is- which is some stuff that Ruby's letting her on to, yes, about the garlic and uh, kind of making a joke about, but it's true. And uh, Letty kind of uh, has to get away from that situation in that moment, and she finds the orrery mm-hmm. that she didn't know was there. So she gets on the phone to Atticus, uh, Atticus who has been looking at photos of his cousin and uh, discovered matching birthmarks in different parts of their body. Ooh! Uh, but before it's you can really cloud Atlas. But before he can really, well, yep. Before he can really <laughs> delve into that, uh, Letty has called Atticus and tell, t- told him uh, about the coordinates and says that uh, Hippolyta is definitely going for that and she could be in danger. Ruby is overhearing this, so Ruby's automatically, obviously, suspicious of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I- if I were to wager a guess, I think that Ruby's going to tell Christina about this as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Letty uh, uh, says that he's got to go to Mayfield to save her. Meanwhile, Mayfield, Hippolyta enters the key into the spot on a, on another machine. I uh, love seeing smart Hippolyta. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we, That's what this whole we episode's had about. no yeah. idea up to this point just how smart Hippolyta was. Yeah. Hippolyta yeah. is working out all kinds of stuff, and she's able to understand this information from the machine, and she adjusts the settings while two when suddenly two white cops come in and find her. Yeah. So this is the observatory that these that the cops have talked about in previous episodes. Um, mm-hmm. This is yeah. This is a a time and space travel machine. Yep. And uh, again, like what this episode is about, it's like Hippolyta has been shackled, and like she didn't get to be the person she was always meant to be in a way. Like, just like she she's just solved. It's like that meme of like the lady looking at the equations, but she's actually smart and she actually solves them. Yeah. And she's like she just solved like time travel. Like, yes. holy shit! Like that's incredible. I love yeah, it. Yeah, she's very very wise. Now, for the very first time in this whole show. The show started to lose me. Not oh, in a bad, yeah. not in a bad way. Is it too godly for you? No, I, no, it wasn't necessarily that. It was just we were getting so much information, so much vague information about like what this thing was and what was happening with Hippolyta and everything. Like, um, this was the first time where I just kind of like, this is a lot, and I don't know if I'm if I'm digesting at all. It, it does almost feel like. Uh, the first half of the episode, maybe even a little less than the first half of the episode, because I'm not really sure where the time break is here, but um, should have been an episode unto itself, and then Hippolyta's whole thing should have been another episode unto itself. Then we got like a full ass crazy and like explored episode. and like explored more family stuff, yeah, and what was going on with Atticus and Letty in the episode book, in the the that first half in one whole episode. Yeah, and I wouldn't have mind that. I I actually think I would have liked to have a whole episode of her doing the time travel thing. I, I, I agree. I think that that you got a 10 episode order and you got to trim it down. Yeah. And I think this is just what, where that ended up. It's also like it's taking, cause the book is separated into basically like these, these all anthology chapters too. So I think it's taking basically like yeah. what, like this is that chapter. Like this is what happens in that chapter. Yeah. Um, and I will say that like, uh, I say that because I do feel like a lot of like, because there were so many different threads we were paying attention to in the first part of the episode, I, I did feel like some of them got a little rushed by. But mm-hmm. I do think everything with Hippolyta traveling is 100% solid, and I don't feel like we rushed through it. Not at all. I think it's very well done. No, I don't I don't mean to say that I think we rushed through it. I just mean to say, like, I, throwing a lot out there that I, I, I need a second watch. 
I understand. I, I, I am, but I am saying that I do think that the first part feels rushed because there's too many different threads mm -hmm. uh, that we're trying to pack in and we have to pack them into this certain amount of time because we need X amount of time for Hippolytus travels in this episode. And that is yeah. the focus. So all these little other things that have to happen before that moment are crunched in right here. Mm -hmm. Um, then uh, the next 20 minutes are basically just powers of 10. So, so, so. we're not, uh, the, they, uh, the, the cops pull a gun on her, but Atticus busts into the room and tackles them. The machine gets knocked and it begins opening a hole in time and space. Atticus throws one cop through and Hippolyta ends up shooting the other. And then she gets sucked into the hole herself. With him. With Atticus too. Um, but they're not in the same place. She ain't on earth no more. No. Uh, an alien being approaches her. At least, her. at least she, she definitely, she, she says, it wasn't, it wasn't Earth, at least not our Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she wakes up in a white space, and a being with the biggest fro I've ever seen Hold in my on. life appears. We got to talk about the giant Lovecraftian brain aneurysm, and then there's the two cyborgs who pick her up before yeah. we do the crazy white space. Sure. Uh, that's all. Like, she, she, there's a planet with a big Lovecraft monster, and then two robots pick her up, and then she wakes up in a white space, and then Garnet from Steven Universe shows up. Yep. For a while, I thought that was gonna, that was going to be the same actress, Hippolyta. Mm. She is told she is not in a prison. Nope. Uh, but she's still just left there. Uh, time is going by, uh, and Hippolyta is trying to work out her situation related to gravity and spatial relation relations. Yeah. Uh, she begins separating out chunks from her bed and sees them respond to gravity, and then removes a piece to mess with the door controls. So Epstein, Epstein, right? Yeah. Okay, who on that? So Epstein yeah. created this time machine. Um, I th oh, yes. Because that's what she says. It, the orrery contains the key to his time machine. Uh, okay, then yeah. Then I so, guess so. What was Epstein's goal with this thing? It clearly didn't work out the way he intended. I, I did not get the impression that this is Epstein's machine. Mm -hmm. I got the impression that Epstein had the orrery that oh. had the key to the machine. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that Ori thing is his. I don't know if this machine is his. I'm not sure about that one. I I, I remember her saying his time machine. So I mean, it, but it, his doesn't mean Epstein. Mm, that's true. It could mean someone else. It could just. It could even be just be like Braithwaite's, just like his old time machine or whatever. To be honest with you, my interpretation was that it was Williams. Mm. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. William knew more than her father, and it, she did. She already explained that he was her mentor into a bunch of things. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, my interpretation was when she says his, because she never said Epstein. So what does his mean when she when she's talking to Ruby? That's true. Doesn't they also say that William was a student of Epstein? I don't know. No, I think it was reversed, if I recall correctly. I don't uh, recall that, that. That Epstein was working on, uh, like William helped him to perfect things he was working on, um, mm -hmm. but I don't remember one hundred percent. I'll, I'll. I can I'll only take notes on so many things and watch the show. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, you keep going. I'm going to clarify this. Uh, the the being with the giant afro reappears when she's messing with the door controls and tosses her back, um, asks her where she wants to be, and demands her to name herself. Um, Hippolyta in her whole bewilderment of the situation screams out that she wants to be dancing on stage in Paris with Josephine Barr and then she is mm -hmm. and after she botches that dance Josephine <laughs> uh, uh, Baker sorry Baker, not Barr yeah, yeah. Uh, Josephine Baker tries to help her out uh, so also another real person Josephine Baker uh, yep. the video I watched Give she me. moved to she's an American born she moved to France when she was 19 during uh, World War II, she was an actual spy helping the French resistance. So she was like a badass dancer slash spy. Uh, and then she went on in her older age to be a fighter for um, for the civil rights movement in, in France. And I just think, uh, just a super cool lady, and we get her for a couple minutes in the show, I'm like, well, it's, I get to learn stuff. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Lovecraft. Uh, Hippolyta stays for quite a while and has the time of her life. Uh, interacting with them, learning how to do the dances, mm -hmm. enjoying it. Um, her and Josephine connect on uh, an emptiness in their existence. Mm -hmm. And Hippolyta has an incredible moment where she talks about this is freedom like I've never known. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she has this exceptional line where she says, I feel like they just lynched me without me noticing the noose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like, uh, like, 
I've been living how every white person wants me to live. Yes. Like I, I've never been my own person, which is about like, again, like her whole yeah. discovery of the, the rest of this episode is so awesome. And so, it's so beautiful. And she has had this moment with like one of her idols. Yeah. Um, it's just really good, man. Yeah. I, I thought that that whole moment was just incredible where she's expressing like, this is what like living life is actually supposed to be. And, and then I she, haven't understood that. And then she's like, I think I want to kill some white folks. Yeah. And she and says, I she... want to kill them for what they did to me. And she proclaims, I am Hippolyta, which takes her to another place and another time in uh, a fighting arena. Like, like, yeah, like an African desert <laughs> um, where she's just with a bunch of badass warriors just training, slowly getting, becoming a better fighter. Which, which made me go, oh, so she's like the inspiration for the myth. Yeah. Uh, uh, I but don't, then there's Confederate I soldiers? Know, I yeah, don't know yeah. if that's true either. No, yeah. uh, when we're when we're at the end of it, because we don't even know what time and space that really is. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that like there's something kind of there that when she proclaims all she says is I am Hippolyta, and mm -hmm. then she is a Amazonian type yeah. leader. Uh, so uh, no, who I knows? Like, uh, well, then, but then there's the, the then there's Confederate soldiers. <laughs> Again, I'm acknowledging not necessarily the same time and space of our Earth many or worlds. how that would work. The many worlds uh, but, but I'm like, it, it's not nothing that all she says is I am Hippolyta and then she mm -hmm. becomes a Hippolyta-like figure. Uh, the mythical figure. And then she just becomes a badass warrior and kills a bunch of evil white boys. Yes, she's given a whole lecture when she gets there because she gets her shit wrecked yeah. uh, of discovering her true freedom and uh, she spends a whole bunch of time learning how to fight and eventually bests her teacher. Hell yeah. Um, she becomes their war leader and she leads many women into battle um, and she eviscerates the white man. Yeah. Brutally. Um, there, another fun fact, he's not named, but there's one Confederate general who gets his, 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 uh, his neck uh, slice at the end. Of, at the end. That is a, I forget his name, because uh, who cares, but he's a real Confederate general who was the very first um, uh, clan mm. uh, Grand Wizard. Oh. In real life. Right on. So just like, you just keep, keep him coming, baby. Historical figures. Well done. Yeah. Uh, she gives a speech about their rage and their violence, what these warriors really have in them and how they've never been allowed to express it. Um, and then she lowers her weapon and says, I am Hippolyta, George's wife. Mm. And is taken to another time. Many worlds. Another place uh, back with the man she loves. Um, she tells George all about her adventures. Yeah. I love this scene. Yeah, it, me too. And she explains, it's just nice to see George again, too. Yeah. She explains the many worlds theory. And George asks if she is on another planet, if that makes him real or not. Um, yeah, that's, which is heavy. Yeah, like, it, it is. Am I even uh, real? One of the things I really liked about it is that, you know, he, this George, whether it be her, uh, real George or not, says that, uh, you're right, I did, I did hold you back. Yeah. I yeah. didn't even think about, I, 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 I was about to it. get to that. I was about to get to a note about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hippolyta names the anger that she's been experiencing a feeling of her being shrinking and being made lesser. Um, she laments that George let her feel smaller when she thought that he's someone who would make her feel bigger. Um, and uh, he apologizes because he recognizes that and he wants her to be as big as she can be. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought that entire conversation was really good. Yeah. And, and it's really sweet because George is such a good guy. We're like, it's not like he, he meant to do this. It's just like, you know, you're trying to achieve the American dream, you know, your house with kids and stuff like that. And like, you don't realize you're putting someone in a box. Um, and like, he recognized that. And I, it wasn't like, I'm not doing that to you, baby, or anything like that. Well, he, like, even, he even, one of the things I really like about it is that he even just goes like, on some level, I knew I did. That's what I did. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's a really good self-reflecting moment in a character who's dead, but not really. It's, it's shows weird. I love it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like it's closure. Really, it's, it's like closure. It's really nice uh, just to have, that kind of like George, George has a care for her and everything. Yeah. Um, she says, I am Hippolyta discoverer. Woo, and time. their hands are grasping each other as they teleport together to a new world. The one that is imagined by their daughter in the comics. It's, it's at this point where I thought that George was going to make it at the end of this episode. We did too. Oh yeah. Like, are you going to bring them back to our world? The moment that their hands are touching and you see it around both of them and you're like, Oh, George is coming back. It's like yeah. a, it's the Thor hammer moment in Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> oh, George is coming back. <laughs> um, but I thought it was really cool that where they go after that is they go into the world her daughter has imagined. She is her daughter's created comic character. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. visually, which uh, is really and cool. And the little aliens are really cute. And like they get little things. Yeah. And, like, they're like, they're cool spacemen. <clears throat> yeah, it's really nice. 
uh, at the end of that that discovery adventure that she does with George, she reencounters the being with the giant fro. Um, she is offered to integrate into their society and has the choice. This is a really, really cool. Or going really, back home. Yeah. Really cool, like, cosmic whole thing. This is straight up, do you want to be part of the one collective consciousness from, from Hawksbox? Like, this is that shit those priests were trying to get absorbed into that consciousness. I love it. It's so cool. She says, now that you have named yourself and you know yourself, you uh, can do it. And then she's like, I got, I got, I got to go take care of my baby. I can't. Uh, she says, I don't know how I can fit all of this that I am now into Hippolyta, who she was before, mm -hmm. but her daughter needs her. Yep. Um, and we see her start to shift away. But what we come to is a portal where Atticus spills out. Just Atticus. Uh, just Atticus. I'm assuming that that space diva just like transported her home, <coughs> like transported her back to her house or something. We'll not, have to see. Yeah, because she's not with Atticus. Um, Atticus is trying to summon Hippolyta back, but he can't. He has a book called Lovecraft Country by George Freeman, uh, and he leaves Diana's comic by the dead cop. Yo. Okay, I didn't catch who wrote it. Oh, it's George. <laughs> it's That's George Freeman. So, uh, so he landed in an alternate world, right? This isn't our Earth right now. It's hard to say because it still had the dead cop in the comic. It did. So he he just pulled that book wherever he was. That's what I'm thinking. But that seems to like well, one of the, oh, one of the one thing George did it seems kind of too much. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. One of the interesting things that I that I, that I looked at from the book is apparently George doesn't die in the book. Uh, uh, yeah, Gi is not even a character in the book either. So yeah. Well, so one of the so I kind of thought thought to myself like, could they? Would they? So bear with me. Would it be possible, could it be possible, that Atticus went to the dimension that the book takes place in, and in that world, George Freeman wrote a book called Lovecraft Country and took the book? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and he brought and then the, brought my, my, right? my, my immediate assumption right now is that Atticus, when we see him in the portal and he's back, he like in that room, he is back in in the main world that we've been following. Yeah, because that's yeah. why the cop is there. That's why the cop. We there. just we went on Hippolyta's adventure. He had his own adventure. We just didn't see it, and we mm. probably won't. We'll just hear about it. Yeah. Um. I'm oh, God. I I wonder. He got. He has a book written by George. I, I was only speculating about like where where the book could be. I totally understood the he was in our world again. But no, yeah, I, I like again the many worlds thing. Like this is a world where George instead of writing the the the, the Negroes guide, he wrote a book about all the evil shit going on in Lovecraft Country, or or he's in on it, or I'm or like, he you know, just or in in the dimension he just didn't die and wrote a book based off yeah. his experience. It's like how to safely navigate Lovecraft Country. Um, yeah, we're I guess we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next episode is Diana's episode. She's being hunted because of that comic. Yep. And the whole gang is getting closed in on. Uh, and all the Twitter reactions already like, "Hot dog, what an episode!" But I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. I this is the first time I looked on Twitter and saw a spoiler for Lovecraft Country. Surprisingly, uh, not a spoiler, but like a, a just like an image from it. And I was like, I didn't want to see that. Go away. Yeah. Yeah. I feel <laughs> you. Um. Okay, that's it. We did it. Two episodes. That is it. Two episodes. Only three, 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 three left. Um, three left. Yeah. Uh -huh. three. So good. So stay tuned for our, our episode eight discussion coming soon. Um, this week, maybe, probably, probably. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. We can do it this week. I'm sure. Yeah. So These definitely great episodes. I love them. Uh, uh, yeah. Continually. Good episodes. In the show, show does whatever it wants, and I like it. Hell yeah. You got Ghost. You got Naruto. You got everything. You love it. It's definitely a everything in the kitchen sink type of show. That's a good kitchen sink. Yeah. That's Marvel. one of the Marvel ones. Oh, we both just said Marvel at the same time. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel. We greatly appreciate all your support. Um, we got some other cool shows on this channel. We got our, our Fake Nerd Book Club. Uh, which we are doing Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So one more episode of that one coming soon. Um, and stay tuned for the final episode on that one. Oh, real quick uh, uh, about the Love Country, Craft Country episodes. I haven't listened to the episode seven podcast, but the episode six podcast was really good. Jamie Chung's on it for about 15 minutes talking about her her whole experience doing it and, and uh, how happy she is with it, all that kind of stuff, which is really cool. Um, and then they have a whole discussion about the politics around the Korean War. 
uh, what the representations of Atticus's uh, position in it really mean, mm -hmm. um, and it, it exploring the concept of uh, of being a monster and feeling like a monster through the Kumio. Um, so that episode's great. I recommend it. I recommend the official podcast every time. Solid stuff. Love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely check check out our other Lovecraft Country episodes. Hey, Swamp Thing's on CW now. Check out our Swamp Thing uh, uh, figures watch. Uh, every once in a while, my mom my mom will text me, is this thing good? She texted me today asking me, is Swamp Thing good? And I was like, the fact that you even are considering watching Swamp Thing, it just makes me happy. Um, that, it's weird that it took the CW to get there, but I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. Uh, so check that out if you want. And of course, Basement Arcade is coming. Uh, we, had, we do our normal podcast episodes we've been doing lemon live we do the quarantine cast we just did an episode that was just news coming up it was an episode on vampires versus the bronx yep. uh, stay tuned for that until uh next time guys i'm uh you can find us all at www.fakerpodcast.com and you can uh, find everything at Victor podcast on all the socials Speaking of Swamp Thing, uh, Allison Reed, like just this week, talked about how she'd want to bring Abby Arcane into the CW show verse to explore the arc of the Arcane family that she wanted to do. Um, of course, every actor wants to act. I get it. Of course. No, I get it. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I was like, I'm glad that you were passionate uh, uh, about yeah. like your Arcane family arc. You just wanted to get told I, wherever it, it I can be. I love that show so much. No offense to the CW shows. No, <laughs> just no. <laughs> Please don't, don't do that. Uh. I'm BC McClure on Instagram and Twitter. Sparks. Uh, I'm Sparks Witty. You can find me uh, doing too much school at Sparks Witty on Instagram and Twitter, S P A R K Z Witty. Ryan. It's me, DJ Tony Snark, everywhere. I talk about the X Men a lot. Hit it up. Hit me up. Until next time, guys. Stay fake nights. <laughs>